Good afternoon, friends. As you can see, I'm getting a haircut. <laughs> My wife has been dreaming for the last five days, almost a week, of cutting my hair. She had a bee in her bonnet and Look ideas. I mean, yeah, it's long, it's shaggy. No, but I like it. I like it, but he's had this style for probably two, three years, and, yeah. um, you know, we're going through changes in our life. <laughs> it's time for a haircut. I already big chopped mine like yeah. three months ago. So. Plus, it is it is nice outside. It's a beautiful day. It's yeah. in the 60s. The sun is out. The sky is clear. And I guess it's time to take advantage of that. Yeah. Today is day three of the week. It's Wednesday. It's day three of Zero to Hero. Unhoused to unstoppable. You may be wondering why I'm sitting out here instead of trying to do some work in the library and the answer is because I need to give myself some space to sort of contemplate and process the why I'm a very purpose-driven individual and so if I am doing something but I am losing sight of what the purpose is I really struggle to have the discipline to do it um, so today I'll, in this talking head video I'm going to talk about a little bit of what I did yesterday and what I'm going to do moving forward. I started this series talking about making YouTube content and doing some affiliate marketing and even potentially um, making a, a TikTok theme page. And I'm not quitting on that by any means, um, but I have some new revelations to share. Uh, from experiences because we are living every day to its fullest and that means experiencing new things every day and those change you a little bit. So a couple days ago we went into a coffee shop called Cutters Point. It's a pretty consistent chain here in, in Washington. I don't know where else it goes but I'm sure it's somewhere along this west coast area. and. We, we'd been in there one time already, and then the second time we came in was a couple of days ago. Um, and we encountered a man who was, his name is Hans, and he was doing leather work in the coffee shop, like at the table. He had a whole like leather bag and a bunch of pieces of leather, and he was stitching up stuff. And I was like, yo, that's so sick. We need to talk to him. So I walked over and I um, introduced myself and Ciara. And we talked to him for a little bit. His name is Hans. And he does that for a full-time job, which is actually really sick. Um, he started back in COVID and has been making it his full-time business ever since, which is really cool. Um... So we chatted a little bit, got to know him a little bit, and then we just left. Well, today we walk into the same shop and he's there again. And so I had the boldness to walk up to him and start asking him questions. Um, just get to know him, hear more of his story, tell him some of my story. I didn't really have much expectation of how that conversation would go. Ended up talking for like two hours, um, which was amazing. It was, it was great. And if you're a fellow creative then you know what this is like <laughs> when you when you encounter another creative and you start talking about life and they're like you this is amazing um shout out to Devin and Eli you know who you are so we just started talking to this guy I just started talking to this guy Ciara was sitting at the table I um, decided to give them their space because Reagan and I walked in together and then after we used the bathroom and were drinking our coffee for a little bit he went over to sit with Hans mm -hmm. So I was going to let them have their bro time, and I just sat there doing something else because yeah. I'm a respectful woman. Anyway, <laughs> we talked for two hours, and the biggest takeaway that I took from that conversation, first of all, he was so cool. He um, He's one of the few people who are creatives that I've encountered that also grasp the concept of building a business and I don't say this to 
throw shade at any other creatives, but there's kind of a stigma in our environment that I like making art, but I don't like building my business, and I just want to make art for a living, but doing the business side of it sucks, and I don't understand it, and it's really hard, and I just want to do what I can almost to avoid it at all not at all costs but like do the minimum required business aspect and just focus on my creativity because I don't want to burn out which totally makes sense and and I I get it but if you want to make art as a career you can't really ignore it there's like Hans said there's a marriage of the two where they they have to come together and work together in order to really achieve the future that you want to achieve. And I have been trying my best to achieve that balance and that marriage um, of keeping my creative process safe and keeping it sustainable while also trying to build it into a business and think about metrics and think about profitability and think about advertisement and marketing and you know brand identity and all this jazz you know all the all the aspects of of art that um some artists that i've met don't like to think about hans actually had a pretty good grasp on it and and has more knowledge than i do um because like i said he's doing it for uh, his full-time career for the last four years now he was in tech for a couple years before that and he um, was pretty profitable <laughs> there, making a lot of money, more than, as he said, more money than he knew what to do with. Um, and so, you know, that's helpful. And I did ask him, actually, and this it's probably a YouTube video topic that I'll make a video about later, but there's, there's a couple different trajectories that I've encountered that artists and creatives go on. One trajectory is the trajectory that I've done, which is you, you realize that a job is like not something you want to do you hate it um, and you want to do art for a career and so you just sort of fight with the career side and you're in this weird tension um, of like I want to make art but I also have to work to live and my trajectory has been like well I refuse to put my time into that anymore so I'm just gonna leave the job and just try to make art and now I'm homeless and broke <laughs> so but like I have full time to make work on my creative projects you know so there's that and then there's the other uh, in trajectory that I've seen taken which is where people enter a well-paying uh, workforce and they get paid a lot to do what they do but it's unfulfilling and they hate it. And so after a couple of years, they've saved up some stuff and that's when they take the leap and get into full-time creativity. And I think that there's no right way to pursue a full-time creative life. I think it's just the different journeys of different people. And I've chosen my journey and others have chosen their journey and you know, it's it's an interesting difference that we could talk about. But the point that I'm getting to, my takeaways from, from today's conversation with Hans, and the reason I'm recording this video, is that I was sort of challenged by our conversation and shown a mirror almost and realized like, hey, uh, there's a lot that needs to be done that you're not doing. Um, so number one confession is I have sort of been operating under the mentality that as long as I build up enough social media audience, then I can um, make this work as a living. As long as I can get enough social media views, clicks, followers, what have you, then I'll be able to make a sustainable income from my art, which has been the approach that I've been taking. And I've been really negating and neglecting the 
in-person art markets, mostly because my mentality about art markets has been kind of clouded by pride and clouded by, honestly, ignorance, honestly. If we're, if we're being really brutally honest right now, it's ignorance. Because I've never been in an artist market. <laughs> I've never shown my stuff at like a, a farmer's market or a creative market. I've been to a couple, and every time I go... I'm trying to visualize myself there and I'm like, I don't want to be here. Like, I don't want to be interacting with the people that are here. I don't want to be trying to vie for attention and try to be the, 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 the pretty object that catches someone's eye. And they're like, oh, that would look good in my bathroom wall. And then they buy it. You know, I have been wanting to, like my vision, my goal success for me looks like selling my work in galleries and in exhibition shows where people with a lot of money go and they are investing in like a person they're investing in me as a story and they get to know me and they buy my art for like ten thousand dollars and they add it to their collection or they put it in one of their multiple homes and it's like a statement piece and less of a like sideshow decoration that's the kind of market that i want to be in i want to be sold at galleries i want to be sold at sotheby's honestly eventually someday and i think my arrogance has helped me back from realizing that hey you, you need to start pretty small in order to get there and i think my fear has just been that i would get stuck in some sort of a loop of artist markets where I feel the need to always show up as artist markets and I, I can't seem to get into better ones and so I'm like stuck at level two you know like if level one is like you very beginner and trying to offer stuff on Instagram level two is like starting to show at art markets small art markets and then level three four five is like something I don't even know and then level like 10 is getting sold at big name galleries and and and, and auctions and, and and stuff like that it's like how do you how do you get there um, and I've been telling myself like I said all I have to do is get big on social media right um, and I think that would help obviously but Hans made a point today that I wanted to talk about in this video um, well number one <laughs> I just have to thank him and I have to thank God for the, the love and the grace in, in the what he said. Number one, he said, he asked me what my vision was and I told him what I basically just told you. And he was like, I can, I can hear the youth in your statement. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 I am young <laughs> and I am pretty new at this and it just sort of hit me that wow like he's got more experience and more wisdom than I do and he understands the creative world a bit better than I do and I should acknowledge that he knows more <laughs> um, and the other thing he said was that in his experience because I was, I'm talking about like two different types of customers, right? I'm, I'm the the type of customer I feel like is always at an art market are people who are not willing to spend more than a couple hundred bucks, and they want to just like take it and give it as a gift, or like take it home in their car and like put it on their bathroom wall. Versus the customer who wants to invest in my story, wants to spend like five, ten, twenty thousand dollars on a piece of work, and is like I said just a higher ticket client, a higher value client. And I've sort I I was been operating under the belief that those people don't go to art markets. Which I'm coming to realize I could be totally wrong about that. And so I think this is probably a sign for me to take a slice of humble pie and actually start getting some experience going to art markets not necessarily to make money but as a way to experience 
showing my art to people in person. And I think that's what the most valuable thing would be for me if I start showing at art markets would be just getting the experience of being in front of people, talking about my art to people, and getting that immediate feedback in person. It's a very different culture than a YouTube comment section or an Instagram comment section. It's very, very different, right? And what Hans said that has made me rethink my position on this is that in his experience, he starts small with the entry-level art markets, but what he's seen is that when you get experience there, you can kind of step up, go to some more higher-level art markets, and he called them juried markets, which I think, like, the concept is there's a group of people, you submit your work to them, and they decide whether or not you even have a booth. Like, it's not like a, oh, pay this fee and anyone can come. It's like a, no, we're going to make sure that you're up to a certain caliber before you can even show up. He said that the clients that I'm looking for do tend to go to those higher level markets. Like, they're, they're, they, they do kind of go there. And they do invest in the story. They do invest in the artist. He said he sometimes receives tips from people. Um, you know, an extra, extra 10 or so dollars here or there. Um, and so I'm like, wait, okay, maybe, maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe I need to actually get some experience at art markets and try to become a known commodity in the community. Um, and that was the other thing that he said that really, um, really struck me was that he has be kind of built a, <sighs> by attending regularly and connecting to people, he has sort of staked out a spot for himself in this circle of people, of creatives, and he's now a known entity right people know about him people know about his business and he's if he's if he's at like every single art market or ren fair because he does leather work so he goes to a lot of renaissance fairs you know he becomes a known person right and that knowledge is part of marketing <laughs> that brand knowledge is is something that i've been attempting to get through instagram but he's saying there's there's ways to do it in person as well and I'm beginning to think maybe I need to try to do that is, is find a place find an art community and then try to become a known uh, a known entity right because you know I know this conceptually but I don't really think I've properly planned but an art career I've heard it said is really more about who you know than how good you are. And so the question is, if I'm just hiding in the shadows posting social media content, like sure my name is attached to my art, but like it's all social media stuff, right? Even if I get a million followers, if I go to a gallery and say, hey, I want you to show my work, and they say, uh, what's your experience? I'm like, well, I've actually not been in any art markets I've just shown my stuff in like this coffee shop and that one uh little gallery they'll be like yeah no probably <laughs> you know I can't imagine them even it like I'd have to have a massive social media following in order for them to take me seriously if I have no physical experience right so my takeaway is I think I need to shift my strategy and actually start trying to do some art market stuff so how does this tie to zero to hero <laughs> well there's an art market this weekend and I can either make excuses or I can start making moves and to my knowledge so far as I'm not sure so this I could totally be missing the point of this but I think I think this art market is free to join I'm not sure we haven't done enough research on it yet that's still an unknown but it's worth a shot and if it is free to join then I will be there I don't really want to be there I'm not prepared I have no idea what to expect or what to think about it but 
I think it's time for me to start taking actions in that way, right? Or you could just go and scout. Or I could just go and scout. You know, if even if I can't get in, I can still show up and start talking to people about what's it like and what's required to join an art market like that. And maybe it sounds like they do that one monthly. And there's like half a dozen different artist fairs around this area that we're in. So I could we could set up a pretty consistent schedule, right? And it's not even like to get money, like I said. I would need some money to get into some of them probably. <laughs> uh, you know, booth fees and whatnot. Um but Anyway, I think I think I need to shift my strategy and start to include in-person art markets like that into my repertoire because I I need some experience and and just just hearing him talk about like the experience that he's gained from being in markets like that has made made me realize like hey like there's some growing up that I need to do and it's only gonna happen if I show up and make a space for myself and start talking to people. And get over myself and actually start connecting to individuals. Um, <laughs> because my introvert in me wants to just sit behind my phone and make content and make it work. And never really have to talk to anybody. But the business person in me knows that success comes from your network of people. And the connections that you build. Not from necessarily the work that you do in the silence. I mean, it is a combination. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's 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 a combination of both. But I've been trying to do one and not both. So. <laughs> yeah. That kind of sucks. <laughs> Besides that, as far as Zero to Hero goes... Um, I'm going to make this, I'm going to post this video today, and I plan to make some of my digital marketing content, still trying to promote that affiliate link, I still don't know why I don't get any views on that Instagram account, I think I just need to bring legitimate value, um, so I'm going to keep working on problem, show, problem solving that, see what I got to do to make that profitable, <sighs> I'm going to clip some of this and put it into... YouTube Shorts, um, because I mean, obviously I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel as fast as possible. YouTube Shorts is the way to do that. Making captivating short form content is the way to go. My analytics tell me that a large percentage of people that are exposed to my channel are exposed to me th through the shorts feed and a decent number at more a little more than half of the new subscribers that come in are coming from the shorts feed and so why would I not like make a majority of my content short form content maybe not even a majority but like definitely try to keep a bit more of my content short form and a little bit less of it long form like I love these talking head videos I, I love like talking to a camera I love just like regurgitating, and not regurgitating, but just like talking stuff out. Like that's what I like doing. But what gets attention and what gets um, traction and what ultimately brings in new viewers is short form content. So my strategy for my YouTube right now is make long form videos to create a backlog of videos that people can watch, and then make short form videos that draw people in. It's kind of like the net uh, that brings people in. So, yep, I'll see you in the next clip, I guess. <laughs> Bye. Come on, baby. They need to see my hard work. Look at what I did, y'all. Okay, give us a spin. All right. <laughs> How do you like your new haircut? I like it. It feels good. Okay. He likes it. I did a good job. She did a great job. How do you feel? I feel accomplished. <laughs> I feel happy. Yeah. You look really good. Thank you, baby. You're welcome.